Alabama's season has suddenly taken a turn. Colin Sexton remains ineligible, and the team's leading returning scorer is out indefinitely with a knee injury. Matt, what's the latest with Sexton getting on the court soon, if at all, this season? That is the big question, if at all, because though Sexton is indefinitely ineligible right now, there is a real possibility he never plays for the Crimson Tide. What Alabama has to determine is if Sexton or anyone connected to Sexton took any type of money in order to play for Alabama, if that was part of the terms of his commitment. The FBI's formal complaint alleges that a representative from Alabama arranged a meeting with Rashawn Michelle, who was charged in the FBI case, and the father of a highly ranked recruit out of Georgia. Well, Alabama has a really good freshman class, but the only recruit from Georgia in that class is Sexton. So the question becomes, was that the only element there? And if it is, you could say Sexton didn't know, and then he's going to be clear. But if not, there is the possibility he will not play for Alabama at all. Matt, Alabama is ranked in the top 25 and one here at CBS Sports. Without Sexton, can this team make the NCAA tournament? If it's just not Sexton, yeah, I think they still have a chance, but I don't want to understate this. Sexton is the best player and the best talent they have. And now Braxton Key, you mentioned, top returning scorer, he's out right now. He had a meniscus tear in his knee. He's going to be out at least four weeks. Who knows how long that's going to be? Avery Johnson, Alabama's coach, did not offer a firm timeline. Those are Alabama's two best players. Without them, real chance that Alabama doesn't get back to the NCAA tournament. And this is a program that's been dying to get back into relevance, not just nationally, but within the SEC. These are critical, critical news elements. Here. We wait and see on Sexton with key. Tide fans are hoping he's back by mid-December. Well, the pressure is certainly on for Alabama. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. And for more updates on this story and all things college basketball, keep it locked right here on CBS Sports. This is Dwayne Rankin, columnist Montgomery Advertiser, along with Matthew Stevens, the Auburn beat writer. You know, Matt, when I got up this morning, I thought all I was going to talk about was Gus Malzahn and Auburn going into an SEC home opener. You too. And then, then I got online and saw that one of Auburn's basketball assistants is in deep, deep trouble. He's Explain. Sit, he's sitting in jail right now. Arrested this morning, Chuck Person, uh, on six count felony counts of uh, conspiracy to commit fraud. Um, the, the criminal complaint by the United States Department of Justice details that Chuck Person took a total of $91,500 over time. Time out. Okay. Can you say that number again, please? $91,500. I want y'all to understand that that's a lot of money and for anybody, I, even for a rich person, that's a lot of money. But $91,500 for what? To taking it from a runner of an agent okay. and then diverting two un, at least two unnamed Auburn players who are, who are mentioned in the complaint but not named, right. trying to sway them toward that agent when they get done with their Auburn careers, essentially. And so what, what, what is essentially happening, according to the complaint, is that the, the, runner, the agent is sending money to the runner and the runner is handing the money to Chuck Person. And Chuck Person's job at that point is to tell these play Auburn players, you should sign with this agent, I'll set you up with these meetings with these agents, and telling these players and their families kind of basically turn them toward these agents. That's, right. that's, that's, that's the fraud and that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the bribery and that's the conspiracy. And so that, those are the major federal charges that Chuck Person is facing as he sits in jail right now along with three other major college basketball assistants all across the country. And when you look at this, you go a couple of directions, at least for me. One, and listen, watching the press conference, as it was going on during Gus Valzahn's, to be honest, and I was trying to do two things at once. The way Chuck initiated himself with these guys is that knowing Kobe Bryant and, and, and all the ties to the NBA was like the lure to get a kid to listen to him. And then everything that you just described, you know, is being trans unless it was transpired. Now, the other thing, if you look at Chuck Burson's stay from here at all history that he has here and what he meant to the university being uh, being an All-American. All-time leading scorer. All-time leading scorer, leading to the Elite Eight when everyone thought they had no shot at <laughs> getting there the year after Barkley had left. And all the things he brought for him to come back home to Auburn and be an assistant coach, that was a big deal when he when, when, when Bruce Pearl hired him. And to now be in this point where he's at right now is just a, a story that was a really good one that's now just unraveling. Yeah, he's, he's one of Auburn's favorite sons, as yes. you just detailed. But think about this, Dwayne. This past offseason, he was a finalist for the UAB head coaching job. That's right. And what would have happened then had he be UAB head coach Chuck Person at that point? But I also want to say that there, there's part of this complaint where this kind of got started. You talked about how you know he, he mentioned to the runner 
who ended up being an undercover FBI agent who gave him the cash, and there's probably willing to testify that he gave him the cash. The Department of Justice detailed today that there are two undercover agents that are involved in Chuck Person's case and, an, and a federal informant, which means a, somebody that they were already looking into and has already copped a deal with, with these people in order to, to give testimony, which was in the complaint. Uh, Chuck Person used his fame, let's say, as to say, hey, I coached under Phil Jackson, I coached Kobe Bryant, and, and then used Austin Wiley as a description as the kind of players that he could get at, all, at, at Auburn. Told the runner, hey, I got a player that's going to be number nine in the country overall in this recruiting class. Nobody knows he's going to enroll in January 2017. That's Austin Wiley. I want to make it very clear. There are two unnamed players in this, in this report, in this criminal complaint. I don't know if either one of those is Austin Wiley, but I'm pretty sure that, that player number one is not because uh, Austin, it is mentioned that this player should not, Chuck Person informed this player, don't tell your sisters and don't tell your stepfather about this money that I'm giving you and your family. Well, Austin Wiley has no stepfather and he has no sisters. So he's not one of those players. He's not that player. But, but I don't know any, I don't know, I don't have it confirmed at all who either one of those two players are right now. Right.